your name. You're going to leave him today in Jesus' name. What have you done to his life? Leave me here. Leave me here. Get out. Get out. Get out. What have you done to his life? Leave me here. Leave me here. Leave Holy me. Ghost, fire in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, fire in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost, fire in Jesus' mighty name. You can't stand in this place. In Jesus' name. How did you enter his life? Get out. Get away. Get away. How did you enter his life? Please leave. Please leave. Holy Ghost, fire in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, fire in Jesus' mighty name. What is your name? He destroyed me. Leave. How did you destroy him? <laughs> Through his desires. Which desires? Same sex. Same sex relations. How did you enter his life? When he was a child. Which when means? He was a child. How did you enter his life? Through a family member. Through a family member. Sexual relations through a family member. What else have you done in his life? I have consumed him. He's become addicted to other things because of it. What things? Drugs, opiates, pain medications, money. How did you destroy his life? What did you do to his family? Stole from his family, broke their hearts. What did you do to his career? He doesn't have one. <laughs> what did you do to his finances? <laughs> Wasted them, squandered them on nothing, on death. <laughs> Jesus. Now you evil spirit, you evil spirit tormenting his life. Right now in Jesus mighty name I command you loose your grip now. Out in Jesus mighty name. Out out in Jesus mighty name out of his body right now in Jesus mighty name loose his grip loose your grip loose your grip over this body right now in Jesus mighty name you evil spirit you generational curse out in Jesus mighty name out in Jesus mighty name you're back on the floor right now in Jesus mighty name loose your grip loose your grip loose your grip loose your grip in Jesus mighty name out of his body now Holy Ghost fire in Jesus mighty name out Holy Ghost fire all over your body every trace of darkness loose him now out in Jesus mighty name let there be light in Jesus mighty name let there be light in Jesus mighty name what is your name Cody how are you feeling now uh, numb numb where in my hands, in hands, my face, my my stomach. Okay. Okay. Did you know? Were you the one to say that you destroyed your life? I was aware that those things were being said. Okay, but it was said out of. Did you say more? It was said out of your own will. It was just said. Okay. It just came. Now the evil spirit that's tormenting your life was the one to say that. It was the evil spirit that's bringing torment and addiction in your life. Were we gonna? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm free. Thank you. My name is Cody, and I'm from Spokane, Washington. Now, Cody, we just saw a, a testimony of you receiving a freedom deliverance, and we're going to get to it in a minute. But I want, I want you to start, uh, start off your testimony uh, and by telling us a little bit of background of where you come from and uh, what happened and go on with your testimony. Uh, well, I grew up in a loving, uh, normal, average family, a uh, Christian family, and uh, they raised me the best that they could. It was a middle class family, um, went to church regularly, but it was mostly just attendance for me because I had a secret, and that was, um, I was a homosexual, I was in, you know, I had those desires, I had those thoughts, and I knew it was wrong because of what uh, the Word taught me when I was in church, but I never, for some reason, took it seriously. Uh, I always thought of it as kind of a game that everybody kind of just, it was all just this fantasy that everybody shared, so I never even, you know, tried to take it seriously. And uh, when I reached the age of about 17, uh, I decided that I didn't want to hide it anymore because it was painful to hold it. And uh, I told my family, and my family didn't react the way that I would have hoped then. Um, and it caused me to rebel, and I 
left and I found some people who I thought would accept me and that was the gay community. I jumped into that lifestyle. I started going to gay bars. I uh, went to gay pride parades. I went to drag shows. I was very, very involved in the gay community for quite some time and I did what they did. The things they did were drugs and I did that so that they could accept me. When, when was the turning point? When, you, when did you begin to uh, seek help in, this, in the area of drugs and homosexuality? Uh, a couple of years ago, I went to Teen Challenge by the request of my grandfather. Uh, there, I decided to just kind of see what would happen if I just let go and gave it 110%, just, you know, really apply the word to my life. And a seed was planted then. Um, there wasn't a real devotion on my part. It was mostly just me taking in knowledge, the knowledge that I kind of ignored all the way up to that point. Okay, now that, uh, fast forward to August of last year, uh, what made you come to receive prayer and what happened during? We saw, we saw on the screen what happened, but we want you to describe from your perspective how you felt at the moment as you were receiving prayer. Well, uh, it was a staff member at Teen Challenge that uh, said, maybe there's something bigger going on with you. And, there's this place called Hungry Generation and they have a deliverance service and you know maybe something will happen there so I came and uh, I didn't really know what to expect I uh, I just prayed and I said God I don't know what you have for me here I don't know if you have anything for me here whatever it is if it's nothing if it's something I'm just I'm ready I'm ready to receive it and um, when they prayed over me uh, immediately I felt like I was taken out of my body and uh, I could feel my hands and I could feel my stomach and they were tingling, but I could hear myself talking too. And I knew it was me because I, I, I recognized my voice, but it wasn't really me talking. I kept trying to uh, push in and get a word in and every once in a while I could, I could get a word in, but then I would get pulled right back out and my voice just kept going. It was a very lethargic, dreamlike experience. How'd you feel afterwards after you received prayer? Sorry? How did you feel after, uh, upon receiving prayer? Uh, I felt euphoric, kind of like how when you work out and there's that euphoric, euphoric feeling after you work out. So you felt good? Yes, I did. <laughs> For those of you that don't work out, you don't know what that means. <laughs> but now, now it's been over, over six months that you received your deliverance. Uh, please share with us, how has your life been different? Uh, what, what changes? taking place in your life since then well the enemy still tries to push those thoughts on me they still show up unannounced <laughs> but uh, I know who I am now the desire is gone I have no desire whatsoever I mean, it's... Yeah. so you say that the different the clear difference for you before is that you had the desire the drive the, the, the want uh, but now uh, now it's gone, even though the thoughts occasionally pop in your, in your mind. Yes, exactly. And I credit it all to him. I know that I'm only able to do that because it's his spirit living in me. And I just live off of that. Just Come on, let's put our hands together. <clears throat> now, Cody, um, before we let you go, we know that in our society, this has become mainstream. This has become accepted. And if you think otherwise, you know, you're uh, called many different names and uh, intolerable and things like that. Uh, but we, the Word of God defines our standard. The Word of God defines who we are in Jesus Christ and who we're meant to be, our original position. But I want you to give an advice to those maybe that are watching, maybe that are here that are struggling with those, that kind of lifestyle, those kind of thoughts. What would you tell them? What would you recommend now that you've been set free in Jesus' name? Well, I know that they all, you know, claim to want to live this happy, carefree life where nobody's bothering them. But I know I come from that lifestyle. I know it's miserable. And I don't care who you are. I know it's miserable. I know deep down it bothers you and you know it's wrong. But that's not who you are. I also know that's an identity issue. You place your identity in Jesus and you draw your power from him. That's who you are. That's where you belong. And that's my advice to you. 